Okay, so I'm muting my mic. So anybody have any problem, just put it in the chat. Or you can uh, just call me and tell me, uh, call me, I uh, in the Google Meet, I don't know if you have any problem online. Okay, so in between, I'll ask you to um, give that attendance. So please listen, listen to the... one basic component which is highly required we call it as an activity right so what is an activity an activity is a user interface in android and we need to understand that each and everything in android which you are able to see as in the entire screen is called as an activity so guys android activity is basically the child of a context theme wrapper class so this documentation can be explored over the developer.android.com and now let's try to understand so android application development shall have four major components the first component is the activity the second component comes up as a service then you got broadcast receiver and then we have content provider so these are the four major components for developing an android application activity is a user interface whereas service is a background component and broadcast receiver can receive the events and then thereafter it can process content provider forms the database let's take up one example so if you are going to set up an alarm you need to open an alarm application so there will be one user interface where you shall set alarm right and this is typically an activity now the data gets stored data is saved right data is saved somewhere so that is how you got your content provider finally you got uh, your service which is uh, constantly looking for that time interval to come right so service will look for the time interval to come right so let's say i got the alarm at 7 is to 0, 0 am so now there is one background service which is constantly monitoring when this time interval will be clicked so the moment the time interval is clicked service will send one event it's gonna fire an event right and the event handling will be done by this guy known as a broadcast receiver right so here now when the broadcast receiver will handle the events at that interval of time you might get a notification or any pop-up sound right where you can wake up so guys we are now going to create an android application project where we'll be demonstrating activity right so as of now the today's agenda will be to demonstrate the activity further this activity out here is one of the most crucial component because if you're writing an application you need on a minimum of one activity so that you can present something to your user right so let's get down to and let's try to see how we can create an android application project so you need to launch an android studio then you start a new android studio project out here Right. So once you will create an Android Studio project, you will be getting one complete project structure. So guys, there are two major folders. One is the app folder, one is the Gradle. So app will have all your code which is going to construct your application. For example, we'll have a manifest file out here which is referred to as Android manifest. So here you define all the components of Android. For example, receiver service your activity your provider so all these components are registered in the manifest file so android works on inversion of control principle so what we do we configure each and every object in the manifest file that's like an xml file and android system will construct the objects for us so we don't construct the objects for our classes which we'll create so the object constructions, it's going to happen as an inversion of control for us. So guys, the Java files will be available in the Java 
hold if you can see out there right other than that we got the res as in resource directory where we will be having all of your resources available for your application for example some images some layouts or some strings coming into the values direct now gradle is a build system where you need to manage your complete application build environment right for example which sdk version you are going to compile your application with right and thereafter we got build tools version we got application id minimum sdk version target sdk version version code and version name right so all these are the attributes which are linked to your gradle so let's now come up and try to create one sample project and thereafter we'll see how we can explore more of the android so let's open android studio so guys uh, here is the window for your android studio right so we got this android studio coming in so what i need to do is i just need to do start a new android studio project out here so let's say start a new android studio project so before we start a new android studio project out here we must try to understand one component known as activity right so let's try to see so guys activity is one of the user interfaces in android so we say that an activity is a blank frame right so the way we got photo frames so activity is an empty frame so it's an empty frame more or less so it's having nothing within it so it's an empty frame and this is uh, developed in programming language known as java right so that's like your activity the second thing which we have is known as uh, layout so your activities can have layouts now what a layout is so guys a layout is an arrangement right so it's an arrangement so we got layout layouts are typically written in xmls you can also write in java but uh, this is how you can do it as in again in version of control so you can mention the views in the xml file so here the layout will have some arrangement of views how the different views can come up all together right for example the text fields where you going to punch in some uh, you know name or phone or email so some kind of radio buttons where you going to uh, put your gender as in male and female right and there you can have one button on click of which you can try to register so all these views so what we got over here we call them as views so views can be positioned within a layout right so layout is an arrangement of how the views will be placed and this layout is constructed in an xml file so what we do we take on to this layout we get this layout out here and we place it over here exactly here if you can see so finally your activity will look like the way you have designed your layout so you going to put a photo frame right and then you going to paste a photo you going to take a photo into your photo frame right so that's how you going to uh, do your activity part so guys activity is an empty frame and layout is basically how the views will be positioned within that and finally you bring your layout to the activity so now come back to our android studio so guys in android studio if you can see i got one uh, application name out here so let's try to name this application as activity demo let's say it's activity demo now the company domain should be written after your project name so this is the same name which will appear as a label to your application with the company's domain you got one reverse arrangement out here as a package name that's like co.edurica.activitydemo right so guys this is highly important over here package name right so let's see why it is important it's a reverse order right it's a reverse order and below is your project location so when i am going to say uh, this package name where this package name will be you know useful let's see that so i'm going to open google play store so let's see that and let's search for edureka so here we got one application so guys if you can see 
so this package name acts as a unique identity of your application on play store let's try to search for some more apps let's say facebook so here you can see com dot facebook dot katana right so it's like the project name so katana is basically the name of the kind of uh, their application right you open down the messenger you can see that it's a com dot facebook dot orca so guys we got your project identifier out here in the play store as a unique identity for your application so it matters a lot right so let's say next in my next part i got my application to be developed for phone and tablet in case you want to choose more you can choose more targets but here we are going to select one minimum sdk version so minimum version is the version on which your application will run so below kitkat your app will not function but kitkat and above your app will function right so you choose a target as per your requirement now in this next part of our application uh, creation you can see our file so that's like the name of my activity other is your layout name that's like your xml file so guys let's see once again so you got an activity which is an empty frame and you got a layout which is basically your xml file so you can change the name of your activity if you want for example let's say this is activity 1 and the layout name will be automatically modified for you you want to change the name you can change the name let's try to write a in upper case so it's going to give you an error so resources are supposed to be in lower case all right so make sure that you do that part and now typically in the end you need to hit this guy finish so gradle will come into action now so guys gradle is gonna build the entire project structure for us let's see how the gradle is gonna you know do everything so it's gonna run some scripts right it's gonna configure our project it's gonna resolve some dependencies here or there so typically it is done in moments right so let's uh, just wait for the gradle to come up all right so here we are so gradle has configured one entire project structure for us right so this is one tip of the day which will be given by intellij so this is the intellij uh, uh, you know screen so it's basically an id out here so let's close this tip so if you want you can just uh, continue with the tips if you want right so below you can see there are uh, multiple processes which are running right so after you close the tip you can see now we got one entire project structure open in front of us so there are two files which are open in my editor over here one is the activity 1.java so that's like your activity file one is activity underscore 1.xml which is one layout over here if you can see it's layout file which is comprising of a view known as a hello world out here guys if you can see correct so guys we have this entire project structure if you can see now so starting with the folder app we got manifest let's open the manifest manifest file is comprising some information regarding your application right so let's try to see that so it says allow backup true it means that your application should be backed up you got an icon of your application which is uh, taken from the mip map directory so if you open your res directory and you go into your mip map you find these icons coming up over here you double click it and you can see this icon so this is one default icon which android will provide you in case you want your icons you can put it into this and you can just uh, rename this guy right so we got a label label is the name of the application which will be coming along with the icon so when it says activity demo but when you click on it it says add the red string slash app underscore name so you go down to your values and strings dot xml so here you can see app underscore name coming up as activity demo so guys anytime if you want to change the name of your application you can do so right for example you can say adurica demo app right so anytime you want to change this you can change it. it's very easy now moving ahead from strings.xml let's uh, understand what is this round icon so guys uh, some of the apps they want to support the round icon so we also have a provision for the round icon so this is round in shape right if you can see 
then you got supports rtl so guys your apps going to support uh, the locales which are from right to left for example uh, arabic languages then you got the theme of your application now what is meant by the theme of your application so if i am going to create any powerpoint presentation it might have some theme so theme to be precise will have some colors right what are the different colors in your application what's the color scheme of your app that's like a very basic introduction to theme so we got this theme known as app theme available in this styles.xml let's open styles.xml in the styles.xml you can find that we got something known as color primary color primary dark and color ascent there are three colors right so what are these three colors all about so if you open down the layout file you can see some blue color uh, coming out here and some dark blue color coming out here right so where the edureka demo app is written we call it a toolbar which is a color primary and above where the wifi and the battery and the time is coming out so we call it as a status bar where the primary dark color is created so over here in my styles.xml these colors are taken from the colors.xml in the values directory out here so color primary color primary dark and color ascent so guys color ascent is a kind of you know color for your let's say cursor so what cursor and what focus will be of color so it is like this color so you want to change the color just click on this and you can any time change the color scheme of your application right so it's like very basic so that's like your color primary and primary dark should be exactly a bit uh, more darker in tone so that's how the toolbar should be and color recent can be any color of your choice right so it can be any color of your choice so typically i'm going to take it like uh, a bit red in color let's say that now come back to your layout file once again you can see the color scheme of your application is changed the layout file was showing you some blue colors and now the colors are changed out here for us so guys very basic introduction how you create an application and what the manifest file is all about right so manifest file will have lastly as an activity right which is uh, your activity one within the package co.edubeka.activity demo so activity one over here if you can see is your you know coming out to be as one java file where we said a set content view in a method like on create r dot layout dot activity underscore one so guys r stands for resource as of now so r dot layout dot activity underscore one so this is my layout if you can see this is my layout r dot layout dot activity underscore one and when you open this activity underscore one it's the same layout file so this has two views now one is the design view one is the text view so when you open the text you will find that it's all code written out here you can see out so this is all code now so it says some constraint layout having a text view correct so guys you need not to worry about the source code what you can do is you can just drag and drop the views as per your choice you can just you know bring in some button out here or here and there after this button it can be positioned from left right etc etc here and there right so you can drag and drop the buttons anywhere and everywhere you want right so that's like your basic ui arrangement so guys i hope this layout is very easy to understand and you can drag and drop the things and in the code you can find that everything is coming out to you automatically right it's all automated for us you need not to code so a bit of coding can be done for example text view is hello world you can say it's going to be activity 1 and you can just write down the text color goes like uh, color primary dark and you can see the text size goes like uh, for example 20 dp so the text of the button can be like uh, submit correct and when you see the design part so this is how uh, the data is uh, different now so things changes now right so manifest file so we are on to manifest file somehow so this is the activity one and i hope now the manifest structure is very clear and this entire structure out here is open in front of you guys right so this is what every part of the project is more or less have something to link with your manifest itself right gradle scripts contains one uh, you know build dot gradle over here 
which is having the entire configuration to build your project so what is the sdk version what is your application version what is the name of your app version what is the application id etc etc it is also having the sdk location for your android so android studio will download the sdk right so where you will have all the frameworks all the apis so here you can see the sdk we also have ndk that's like native development kit so in case you want to include some native library and you can use it in your uh, you know project so you can easily do so so guys this is one basic project structure for us so how we can run this project to run the project you need to have an android virtual device right so here we got avd manager so let's click on to the avd manager in the avd manager part you can create your virtual devices from here right so you need to choose one template for example you can choose pixel and you can proceed and you can create one complete android virtual device right so once you are done with the virtual device you can just start it off so creating a virtual device is very basic it's just one wizard where you need to do certain steps for example choosing out to be what's the os version which you want you can download the images of different different emulators or simulators so let's start this android emulator and once you are done with your project structure guys right you need to have an emulator or you need to connect one android device with your computer via usb right so once it is done you need to hit this guy green button out here which is running your application so when i give the command to run an application gradle again will come into action so gradle's gonna build the entire project it's gonna compile and make one apk file which will be installed on your emulator or on your connected device so guys you just need to connect a device with your pc and it's gonna detect it so sometimes right you need to uh, download the drivers and you should also enable the developer options in your settings right to do that just google it out so let's uh, wait for our emulator to turn on so now the emulator is uh, you know up so let's unlock the emulator so guys this is again a very basic emulation of an android device let's hit the run button and see what will happen so it's going to tell me that this is one connected device which i can find we call it adb so android debug grid so it's it's going to detect what and all are connected devices so let's hit the okay button since uh, i'm going to deploy it on my emulator out here let's hit the okay and now you can see the gradle came into action so gradle build is running right so you can click to see what kind of all the tasks are being happening in the background if you want right so let's just wait for this gradle build to get finished and you will see one projection of your application in the emulator so now it's saying that it's going to index it and it's installing the apks if you can see the status change out here below over here guys it's installing the apks and now it's launching the activity so here we are with one of the very beautiful sample application for you people right so we got an activity one and a button summit let's hit back let's go to the application so we got this uh, application named as edureka demo if you can see guys over here so it's edureka demo out here so this is your application so in the manifest file the activity main and launcher over here means that it's the first activity which is going to come up when you click on the icon right so guys we got this activity as in main and launcher that's why it is coming upon the click of your app icon right so when you click on the app icon main and launcher should be the action and category of your activity let's now come back to the slides right so guys i hope the structure of the project is clear so once again let's take on the manifest so manifest file will provide all the essential information for our android so it's going to have lot of things we got action activity you know provider receiver services uses permission so if you want to come up with some internet permissions or you know uh, accessing the memory so you need to write uh, this uses permission that we want to access uh, the external storage or so so this is what we got as in manifest file 
so guys now let's try to explore something known as life cycle of a component called activity activity is one user interface we didn't create the object of activity so if you see closely if you will observe i just created the class i haven't written anywhere activity 1 ao assign new activity we didn't do it anywhere we didn't instantiate activity so who's going to instantiate activity android container is going to instantiate the activity for us so it's inversion of control which will be coming into the action right so let's uh, now come back and try to see the life cycle of an activity so guys activities life cycle will have series of callbacks so the first callback is known as on create so whenever your activity will be launched on create method will be executed it's a kind of a constructor call now after the on create your activity will be started so it's like on start so on start is a method call when activity is pushed into the task that's like a back stack so what happens when you open lot of activities so we got something known as back stack or the task which gets created so all the activities are pushed into this task so after the start you got resume so resume is one function call where your activity is entirely visible to the user and user can interact with it right now the activity is running so user is uh, interacting with the activity and he can do lot of tasks in the ui part but as soon as some other activity or some other component covers this activity right so this goes in the background but it is partially visible so the ui is partially visible but user cannot interact so the state of the activity goes like pause so another activity is supposed to come on the foreground but it is not covering the activity to the full so you can see the below activity as in some inactive state so that's like your pause state so as the user uh, again navigates back to the activity so pause is linked with your resume right so if activity is paused it can be re resumed and the stop is a state when the user is unable to see the activity and unable to interact with the activity so if you are in a stop state you will again go to the restart and then start and then again resume and so on and so forth so guys apps with the higher priority they need more memory so there are applications which have higher priority to be executed so they need more memory so what happens app processes can be killed right so activities whosoever are in stop state they might be killed by the system so you can again come back and get your activity recreated by the system itself if system destroys it so guys an activity can be destroyed by the system or even you can by pressing the back key or by executing one api call called finish so when your activities object is deleted from the memory from the back stack you got this call known as on destroy so that's like our entire life cycle of an activity from launching till the shutdown right from creation till destruction let's try to write one program on the life cycle of an activity now so guys create is a state when activity is created resume is a state where activity is visible and running and the user is interacting with it stop is a state where user cannot see the activity and activity is covered by some other activity so it's the background so user cannot interact with the activity pause is a state where activity is visible but user cannot interact with the activity it's like some other component has covered your activity but you can see the activity and you cannot interact with it destroy is a state where your activity is removed from the memory let's try to override each and every life cycle method of your activity and try to run the code and see how this life cycle callback will come into action right so let's see guys how the life cycle methods for your activity can be described now what i'm going to do over here is i'm going to put one log so log is like you know uh, one clear textual statement which will be printed out here in android monitor so we're going to do the logging process if you are already aware of uh, logging it's pretty good so as of now you can treat like a ciso statement which i'm going to put it over my android monitor so if you are aware of log for j it makes perfect sense so logging in android so here you need to give one key right so for key 
I will just say a uh, string tag as in your activity one, right? So here we are. The tag goes like activity one. And here you say tag comma on create. So that whenever my activity one will be created, it's on create will come into account. So we got an on create method. Right, so on create method, we gonna get this uh, tag that's like on create, and after the on create, I'm going to override certain more methods. Let's see that. So you got on start, then I got on resume. So let's also try to override restart. You got on resume, on pause, then you got on stop, and finally I got something known as on destroy. So let's put this log statement in every lifecycle callback method. And thereafter, we'll try to execute the code and we'll see one significant difference. So when it's called when, so we'll see that, guys. Let me just uh, do one change. All right, so we are close to that now. Good to go. So we got create, start, restart, resume, pause, stop, and destroy. So let's run the code and now see when these lifecycle callbacks will come into action. So guys, this is the Android monitor out here. I'm going to open it, right? And I'm going to write this activity one as in filter, right? So I'm going to write this activity one as in filter. That's like my tag. So now you can see we got create, start resume it means activities first of all created then started and then resume now when you hit the back button let's hit the back button directly so when you hit the back button your activity is paused and then stopped and then destroyed so what does this mean now it means that there is a sequence of lifecycle callbacks which are supposed to come into the action create start resume if you press the back key directly it's going to go to the destroy before it is destroyed it gets stopped before it gets stopped it is paused let's uh, reopen so you again got create start resume let's uh, press the home button out here if, if you can see in the middle right so it's in the resume state you press the home button and some other guy came on top of this guy so your activity went from resume state to the stop state so before it goes to the stop state it is going in the pause state Right, so from resume, it went to the pause and then to the stop. Let's try to bring back our application. So here we are. So from your stop state, it restarted and then it again started and again it is resumed. So these are a couple of, uh, you can say, instances or you can say scenarios where we are able to understand the life cycle of an activity. But guys, activity's life cycle is vast now. There can be various other scenarios where this life cycle of uh, activity can come into account, right? So we got create, start, resume, pause, stop, and destroy as in the major life cycle callbacks of your activity. All right, so let's uh, slide down the presentation now, guys. So the next part over here is what are the various layouts in Android? So when we are particularly talking about the layouts, so we got various layouts in Android, right? And we need these layouts so that we can align the views over here. So what we got, we got views in our Android applications in the activities with which the users will interact, correct? So activities just one frame or container. And the layout file is going to act as an arrangement of the views. So we got different arrangements in which you can process your views. And the layouts can be created in two different ways. One is you write an XML. So again, a version of control comes into account here. So here layouts can be defined in XMLs, and uh, we can uh, present these layouts in our layout directory in the application folder right so we saw that let's try to see it once again so in the layout directory you can create your layouts over here so 
we can also create the layout file at runtime i mean layouts at runtime so you can create it programmatically so whatsoever can be done in xmls can also be done in programs now what are the various types of layouts so guys the answer is there are n number of layouts but what are the major layouts if you can see so we got linear layout we got relative layout recycler view list view and grid view right so these are the majorly used layouts in android relative layout is now a kind of an obsolete uh, layout and we got constraint layout as the new layout these days right so relative layout is replaced by a constraint layout so let's see what these layouts are all about right so let's try to understand the layouts one by one and see what and all they can do for us so guys i will be demonstrating linear and a constraint layout for you people right but recycler list view and grid views they gonna uh, work with something known as adapters so let's try to understand the very first layout as a linear layout or i'll explain the first layout as a constraint layout which is a replacement to the relative layout so let's see that part so guys the root element if you can see is a constraint layout over here so what happens in the constraint layout in the constraint layout you can position the views as per your choice wherever you want so one view will be you know a constraint from the four directions right left right up and down so it's very much in line to what we got as an ios app so if you are an ios app uh, developer you can get it very easily so what's basically a constraint is so you are putting out the constraints so that for different different dimensions of the screen everything remains intact correct now let's uh, drag and drop one uh, more button out here so when i have drag button so where exactly you want this button to be available right so this button has uh, nothing uh, you know linked here and there but this button is having some linkage let's say that this button out here is linked from the top and the bottom left and the right so now this guy is uh, having nothing to do with these two views so one is the text view another one is this button right so there's nothing to do with these but at the same time if you take this and you try to match it to this guy so now this guy is in uh, constraint of this guy over here so this management goes a bit different now so we can actually very beautifully design your views in a simplest manner so who goes where and how with the help of constraints so in the background these constraints which are being created if you can see these constraints right so they are done automatically for us and we need not to worry for them right so that's like a very basic layout known as a constraint layout then the other kind of layout which we have is known as a linear layout so guys linear layout is a layout where we got all the views either in a vertical direction or in a horizontal direction so linear layout we gonna place the views linearly or sequentially one after the other let's see how this linear layout is gonna work so what i'm going to do in my project out here so in this resource directory in the layout directory let's do a right click let's create one new layout resource file so i'm going to say it is activity underscore one underscore linear so by default the root element is the linear layout if you can see out here you say okay so here we are with the linear layout so it's basically now having one root element as linear layout with the orientation as vertical and width and height as some match print match right means cover the entire frame right so by default the orientation is vertical out here what i can do i can drag and drop the views now so for example i am going to drag a button so here the button is drag right so it is going to uh, take the width as match parent but i can do a wrap of content where this width can be managed out here so let's try to name it as button 1 now the next button if you are going to drag you can see it is being dragged below the button 1 not exactly over here because it is linear arrangement and it is in the vertical direction right so the other view for example check box other view radio button so every view is being placed one after the other right so we call this arrangement as a linear arrangement what i can do 
I can also create one linear layout within a linear layout, right? So let's say a linear layout. So width is like match parent, height is like wrap content. So we can have nesting of layouts now. So guys, nesting of layout is like you got a layout and you're gonna put a layout within some other layout. Now what we are going to do over here, let's come down and let's try to write some uh, button. So width goes like wrap content and height goes like again wrap content and the text of this guy goes like BTN1. All right, so it can be any name of your choice. And the orientation of this linear layout, I'm going to set now as horizontal. So if a linear layout is having a horizontal orientation, whatever the components or the views you are going to add in your layout, they will be now aligned in a horizontal direction. So the overall layout is a linear layout, but we got one nested layout with the orientation as horizontal. So guys, I hope this makes a sense now, right? Where we can create nesting of layouts and we can either have horizontal or the vertical arrangement. So linear layout is most suitable when you're going to write a registration uh, UI. Let's say I want to register as a user with different details, right? So you can come up with a linear layout because here the things are supposed to be linearly arranged. Let's come back now and now try to understand the next part which is your relative layout so guys the best way of relative uh, now the relative layout is a bit you know kind of old or you can say an obsolete uh, layout so the newer one is the constraint layout which is a replacement to the relative layout but let's try to understand how relative layout works so in relative layout you can place the views relatively to some other view right so let's see how we can do so I'm going to come down and I'm going to say one more layout out here. And let's try to say this is activity underscore one underscore relative. And here the root element is coming out to be relative, a linear layout. Let us change it to relative layout. And let's say, okay. So what we can see, we can see that the root element is now relative layout. So what happens in the relative layout? So if you are going to design the relative layout, drag and drop a view wherever you like. So it's, it's pretty much like your constraint layout, but here one view is relatively placed, you know, if you can see out here, so it's basically positioned. So this button is uh, relative of this button. If you open out the text now, so they have linkings. So for example, the button ID is six, right? So let's say the text is one and this text is two. So button two is placed below this guy. So it's a relationship. So child siblings are relationship more or less. Let's try to drag and drop some toggle button. So toggle button out here, if you can see, it's again basically aligned with some button. So what is happening over here, guys? So views are always positioned here with respect to the other views. Correct? Drag and drop, place the views here and there, wherever you want. That's like your relative layout. Let's slide down the presentation now. So guys, other than relative layout, we got a list view. So list view is one layout which will display the data in some, you can say scrollable form in a linear arrangement. So list item is the one over here in the list view so just like your whatsapp so whatsapp is a list view so all the items in the whatsapp are referred to as list items so we need a design pattern so for that google has already given us a, a class known as adapter like an array adapter or a base adapter or a simple cursor adapter so list view works with the adapters so adapters are the one which are the design patterns which contains the data and they help to bind the data on the list view so likewise list view, if you want to come up with some uh, you know grid arrangement we got a grid view so guys the grid view is also one layout which is scrollable but here the list items are replaced with the grid items so we got rows and columns over here and this also is one of you know kind of uh, the most uh, useful layouts in our applications for example if you want to come up with a gallery so the images are supposed to be a grid view. They are not supposed to be a list view, right? 
so uh, it let developers to add widgets in the grid so you can add some you can create some dashboard kind of a ui for your activity right and you can put some different different options out here so we got out of the box support for scrolling so we need not to worry about the scroll views over here and it's going to use the same adapter which is used in your list view so guys uh, finally we got something known as recycler view so recycler view was launched in the lollipop version of android and uh, it is also having a backport support so what's recycler view all about we got a flexibility in the recycler view known as a layout manager so layout manager can dynamically switch the view of the recycler view either to a linear layout or to relative layout or to a staggered layout so it means what either you can dynamically change the views uh, into relative i mean into linear into grid or into your staggered so let's take one example out here so if you are going to search in the amazon right so there they will give you one view switching option so either you want to see all the items in the grid arrangement or in the list arrangement so that's like the recycled view is going to help us other than that it's very much optimized on the memory level right so that's like your recycled so guys uh, let's try to now see so these are various layers now right so how you can access your view in your java code right so we need to come up and access a view in a java code. let's see how we can do that so in my activity out here so i got the layout file which is mapped to my java code so this goes like your activity underscore one right so guys uh, this is your layout file activity underscore one what i'm going to do is i'm going to create one function let's say public and let's say avoid and i'm going to say click handler with a view let's say view and a view right so we got a public void click handler and you got a view and a view so guys here i will just uh, put one simple toast you say toast dot make text this comma you clicked button and then say length long dot show so this is one small message which will appear and then it will automatically go off right so it's going to come up for some longer duration of time now come back to your layout file so within this i got this guy button submit so you say on click of this button call the method click handler right so let's run the code now and see what happens so it says installing the apk is launching the activity so click on the submit button guys out here you can see you clicked button now this is the toast which is coming out for us right so it's coming in and it's going off so that's what you coded out over here right so if you can see let's now see how you can use a text view in your java code right so here we got this guy known as text view right so we need to see how we can uh, uh, use this uh, text view in your java code let's see that so let's come down here let's write one text view as in one text view so if you can see right so i got one reference to this class known as text view so it's imported for us if you can see out here so guys what i am going to uh, do over here let's uh, come back to this activity so one we got one uh, text view with the id over here if you can see so the id is particularly this guy known as text view over here this is the id so in my layout file i got an id and in my on create what i'm going to do is i'm going to say text view out here right is basically find view by id you say find view by id r dot id dot text view and whatever the view you have located it's basically supposed to be down casted to the text view so guys in my on create i initialized one view and now i can use it right so on click of my button what i'm going to do is i'm going to say text view dot send the text right and you can say this is awesome or let's try to say let's come up with one date right so you say date and for the date 
let's try to come up as in one date right so i, I got uh, one java.util.date api and here i'm going to say today is plus date dot to string right let's do one very basic code over here so what i'm going to do i'm going to display what is today on my text view let's see that part now let's try to run the code and see what happens all right guys so if you can see now you click on the submit button so it says today is saturday june 10 and it's gonna show us the time right and thereafter this whole information when you click on the button as of now what we have seen is how we can create one basic simple application right where we got one complete project structure out here right and in the project structure we saw that what exactly is this complete project structure and the gradle scripts right we also did try to see how we can create an activity and how we can manage its life cycle and we explored a bit of layouts and saw that how we can use the views within the layouts into our code so guys there can be n number of let us see that and n number of layouts so we got something on as a view group i hope you understood uh, the video this is a small demo uh, where he showed the activity and how you can link your uh, uh, buttons with the code and etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is a small demo so we might uh, continue the demo in the next class uh, and uh, we will see some more advanced stuff like for example using indents and everything etc okay so i would like all of you to mark your attendance now Uh, by the way, I have corrected your internal one and internal two papers. I will uh, maybe within two or three days, I will uh, upload the complete marks, uh, including the previous exams and quizzes. Um, so uh, I think everybody has done good, or I would rather say same. Um, and um, yeah, I think average mark is around 45 or something for internal one and internal two also almost the same thing. Uh, anyway, I will upload the marks, uh, including the assignments and uh, the complete internals. Maybe, maybe I'll whenever I get time, maybe before Friday or something. So if you have marked attendance, you can leave. Uh, I think we will close it once everybody has marked.